welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I do fountain pen ink and paper reviews. And today it's fountain pen. I'm going through a small collection that was sent to me to share with you of Waterman fountain pens. Some are pens that have been discontinued. Others are pens that are still in the market. Okay, now what do I want you to know about this pen before we dive into the review? It is an affordable pen, it is a Waterman, and if it's anything like the pen that I've got that is basically this pen in chrome, it's gonna be a great writer. So, a little bit of suspense, a little bit of a drum roll, we'll see. Does this pen live up to that other pen's reputation? Is this a great little starter pen, a great EDC pen? Well, let's flip the camera and find out. All right, here we have the Waterman Allure, and it is very similar to my Waterman Graduate, which has now been discontinued. Great pen, a little bit of a fingerprint magnet, but an absolutely great pen and a good alternative to all those uh, three-sided gripped pens if you like just a traditional round pen at a very affordable price. This one would fill the exact same gap. It's basically the same pen, just with some different uh, finishes, colors, and that sort of things. So let's flip this over, and what we find is just a reminder of the fact that you've you've bought a pen, and, and in several languages, and then you have warranty information. So this has a two-year warranty, and that actually is impressive for a pen in this price range. That doesn't happen very often, and of course you do have that it was made in China, like it is on so many pens, both above and below this pen in the market. All right, and now broken free from that blister pack prison, we have the Allure out. And it is indeed an identical pen except for the trim ring and the color of the finish to the discontinued graduate. So just a, a model name change and that sort of thing, which means no substantive, no real change, just a name change. And a, a rose by any other rose or a grass burr, depending on your opinion of the pen, is still a rose or a grass burr, right? Right, right, okay. So that's the difference between that pen and the Graduate. This trim ring and this, it says light purple. I think that's the official name, at least as far as I could find it on a couple of pen stores. I would have said lavender, you know, somewhere in there, I guess technically uh, that could be just light purple. Anyway, it is what it is. And so some of you may like this color or you may like some of the others. There is a variety of colors. I'll throw up a couple of pictures so that you can see what's out there. But an overall good looking, very simple pen. It is just a straight barrel pen with nothing adorning the end and just this silver finial with the black plastic ring around it, which again is identical to that of the Graduate. And as I said, it does have the trim ring, which says simply Waterman on the front and blank on the back. Then you have this simple clip, which is the same clip as on the Graduate. Not too stiff, a little bit springy, but not spring-loaded, but springy metal. Just a stamped metal and folded clip. Does the job well. And of course, it has the Waterman logo at the top. Now, as I said, these pins are uh, basically the same pin, and so much so that if you had both and you decided, you know, I kind of like the look of that chrome cap a little bit better, you actually end up with, hey, Waterman, not a bad combo. Maybe you got some of these leftover chrome caps. You do something with that, maybe offer some chrome-capped color pins. Not a bad idea. And then you get to the grip section, which is plastic and is of a pretty good length that gives you a variety of places to hold that pen so you should be able to find your little goldilocks zone there pretty easily and then of course you have that fine nib and as we take a look at that nib it has the waterman logo as well and waterman engraved in it very simple but a nice looking basic steel nib nice easy to read hey twisby do you notice where they put the f above where the nib is pressed into, that kind of drives me a little batty on the Twisby pins, which I love, but hey. Anyway, you can read this one and read it well. And then of course you have that plastic feed that you've seen in some other Waterman pins. And I find that these pins write quite well. So far I've had good experience with the Waterman finds. And then we open up the barrel and we'll learn a few things. First, these are plastic threads and that's at both sides, plastic threads inside the barrel as well. That's an insert. It is a relatively thin metal barrel with that plastic insert. 
So that goes on and off quite easily. This is an international short because it does take international cartridges, long or short, and converters as well. And so you can use a Schmidt converter or a leftover Genhau converter, Waterman converter, although that would be the more expensive choice in this pen. What I found is Waterman pens that have, some have a brass insert. The Emblem has the brass insert. The Phileas has a brass insert. And those don't accommodate all converters, but they accommodate some. So your mileage will vary there. And that's it. That's a quick overview of the design of the pen. Now let's see a few size comparisons and then we'll see how this pen writes. All right, for our size comparison, we have the Waterman Allure, the Metropolitan from Pilot, the Pilot Varsity, the Parker Vector, and then over here we have the Blue Light of Hope from Hong Dian, a Platinum Preppy, and the Jinhao 35. And here are the pens all posted and unposted. All right, starting a brand new Rhodia pad with the Waterman Allure. And this time we've got lines because they were out of the dot pads when I was shopping. Okay. And I really like it so far. I'm going to tell you it, I can already tell you it's writing as well as my old Waterman graduate. And the ink today is BPC, Birmingham Pen Company Blue. This is their cartridges. I bought a bunch of those when they were closing them out and selling them cheap. And they didn't actually make this ink. They make all their inks in-house now. Uh, but this is one that they had uh, made for them by a supplier. And I suspect that it might be the same supplier as Faber-Castell Blue. The ink looks identical. The cartridges are identical. The small Eastern European nation in which they are made is the same. That's just my suspicion. This is just like my graduate, just such an easy pen to write with. N nice balance, nice nib, really smooth, and a good line and good flow. I like that. Let's check for wetness. Not too bad. Not a crazy wet, but not too dry. Uh, maybe not your Goldilocks, but for a lot of people, that would be just right for a fine nib. All right. I like the way this pen writes. Now, it writes just like that graduate, and so the balance and ergonomics and all is going to be the same, and I like that. So that's a good thing, and it's really nice here on this paper, but let's do something else. One of the things that I like to do for a test, and maybe, uh, maybe it's something unusual, I don't know, maybe you do this too, is to just do a speed test of random squiggles. I do this because as I write with the pen, I find out if those tines are aligned correctly or not. I find out if the flow keeps up or not. I find a lot out by this and you learn some of the characteristics of the nib where you're focused on the line of the pen, not on the actual handwriting. I just find it helpful. Maybe you just find it crazy. I have no idea. All right, this was me. I know that was me, I felt that. And then after that, I focused really well on just not rolling or lifting and the pen held up fine. So I think this was me and the pen did great. Flow was good. You, you do learn kind of the variation that is natural even in a very stiff nib like this one that is there. And I just find it helpful. So what do I think about this pen? I think for a bargain pen, and it is a pretty good bargain of a pen, it's really quite good. The nibs are good. They're reliable pens. I've had great luck with my graduate. Uh, this color wouldn't be for me, but that really does not matter. I will tell you this. This color brings back good memories for me. My uh, grandmother went by the name of Meemaw, like a lot of Texas grandmothers in the 70s, and 
I can't tell you how many times after teaching all day long, she and my grandfather and I would go out to check cattle, feed cattle, check the fences, and make sure the windmill was turning and the pump was going and all that good stuff. And my grandmother would be in a 70s pantsuit, that color. Now, if she wore this color, she had to get out of the car and help feed the cattle. She also had a bright red one she wore every now and then so that she could pretend that bulls would chase red and not get out of the car and not have to get out in that Texas heat. Love my Mima, and she would love this color. As far as the pin goes, great. Uh, I think it writes really well. I know the one I've had long term, the graduate does. And I think what I've said about this pin applies to this. You can watch that video too if you want to. Uh, but I would recommend this just as well as this. And it, this is not a fingerprint magnet like my graduate is. There is that one downside of this pen. But what do you think? Do you have a graduate? Do you have an allure? Is there a certain color from what's available that you would choose? Why don't you share that in the comments below? And be sure and like, share, and subscribe. God bless you.